What if I just turn around right now and see back? Get right down to business. You will notice that chat has changed. That is for a reason. We found a neat little thing that lets us put YouTube chat on screen. Now you're probably wondering, why is that? Well, we'll be covering that more in another segment, but the short version is, is that uh, White Forest decided to drop us. I'd like to say I know why that is, but I don't. We got a message from White Nervosa a couple days ago, like Monday or Tuesday, and essentially uh, was told that we had violated their SOP. I've heard a couple people tell me like what that is as far as like different acronyms, but the reality is, is that when we started working with White Forest, there wasn't anything to sign. There wasn't anything. Paperwork. There was no paperwork. There was no Legal specifics. Anything. As far as I can tell, they're entirely, it's entirely based on vibes. And what seems to be the issue is that we have violated something or other members of this, that, that group or that clique spoke up against us. I know there are a couple people who are in that group that have have an issue with us. I won't speak their names uh, for fear that they will appear like Beetlejuice. But regardless, um, these people, I have a feeling, uh, petitioned for us to lose our website. Now, this is temporary. Um, we are in the process of building our own. We have some very, very talented people who have some very, very uh, good ideas to build a similar website. And yeah, we're going to do our own thing. If we're in control of it, that means that uh, nobody can drop us. That's probably for the best. Basically, everything has got to be off-grid. Now, though, we do have luck with that. We found a way to get you that on screen, so anything worse? It has been a really weird week. Long story short is that the week has been really strange. The, the big uh, things that have happened, um, one... Uh, we have been uh, dealing with the loss of the website, which really sucks because the loss of the website means that we also lose the ability to take donations donations to the site, and that means also subs. So if you would like to donate, I believe you can hit exclamation. Where the hell do I type, type this? There it is. Exclamation dono. Nightbot should be working again. We made sure the little bastard was working. There we go. So if you'd like to donate and not have uh, have YouTube take a chunk, you can always donate mm -hmm. through Streamlabs. Otherwise, um, you can donate through Super Chats, Super Thanks, all that stuff. Um, that's going to have to be the way of things. You can also become a, a patron on Patreon. That's going to have to do for now. Um, that will get you a role in our server if you do join our server. If you are a member of the Patre uh, Patre uh, our Patreon and you need to get into the server, let us know. The server is currently locked down except for uh, new patrons, and those people will be vetted. <laughs> Uh, the reason for this is uh, there's a large harassment campaign that is in and basically trying to frame anyone that's in our server at the moment. By the way, there's a thousand people in there. Like That's a lot of people to try and deal with, but they seem pent on it. So here we are. Everyone else seems to have gone to hell. Mr. Hidden, you have no idea. Well, and this kind of goes along with what we're doing. I know that uh, Sage and uh, Xena are calling it our island arc. I'm calling it containment. Uh, by that, I mean is that we're just not interacting with the online left at this point. The majority of them seem pretty much as reactionary as uh, right-leaning people. They just seem to have better ideas. They do not enact those ideas, nor do they use them in their life. So um, there's no real point to engage with them unless we have a common goal. And that really comes down to short and midterm goals. I'm not talking long-term. The big issue here is, is that like the age of bread tube and left tube where you know, shit was basically like a particular way and everything seemed kind of unified, that 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 time has come and gone. Now there is a very large incentive for drama, a very large incentive for uh, betrayal, backstabbing, etc., because there is a monetary and clout-based incentive for it. We talked about this in our video about no flake um, and rape culture. And there's also done a number of stuff on the tech side of things and how that affects dopamine in your brain and all that too. Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely at play here. So basically, long story short, is that, uh, you know, we're kind of changing the way we engage with things. Yeah, when Lindsay Ellis got chased off, I think that was a pretty good death knell. That was the beginning of our channel. And while we had some good times interacting with some people, I mean, pretty much everyone we've interacted with, except for pretty much Bosch, has 
you know, been very tribalistic and even the smallest disagreement on, on strategy or politics seems to, uh, seems drive, to drive, drive people wedges. apart. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's also just a lot of misinformation. There's also this tendency that I would think people on the left would be better at. And again, we'll talk about this more in another segment, but like people just believe stuff. Someone hands you a document and that document has a framing on it. And that framing is immediately accepted. And then people read it from that framing and there's no real critical thinking. There's no seeking uh, both sides. There's no willingness to understand things. And so this week has been really wild because uh, there's a couple documents floating around about us. Um, we'll talk about these more as time goes on, but um, one of them is about my relationship with No Flake, in which a bunch of DMs are leaked, and the DMs basically paint us as a lot of like cherry-picked stuff to try to make my panic attack seem like I'm abusive or controlling or something. Um, it's really nonsense. And the joke of it is, is that even if that document were accurate, which it's not, that doesn't ev that doesn't erase what she did. It's not a counter argument. It's uh, it's it's at best an addition to the story. But even if that was the case, that doesn't uh, fit the narrative as as to what happened. Um, one of the things in there that's really interesting is there's this belief that we coerced her to come to the hotel we were at when there was a discussion Thursday to ask her to come, and then uh, after that, when I said, "Hey, we're at the hotel in uh, you know the place where she lives." Uh, she said, yeah, I'm on my way over. There wasn't anything else. She could have just not shown up. She could have just not, and she well, did. And and then she was there the whole night. She could have left at any point. There's a whole post with her going, oh, we knew that there wasn't a chance in hell. Well, the thing is, is that he showed up with the, having asked her, okay, is, do you want to try and work on this in person. Is that worth it? Because and Zizi said directly, you have a choice. In fact, we have that screenshot. It literally says, you have a choice. And oh, I did that. Mo I did that a couple of times. I really wanted to make sure that like, Sorry, I've, cool got, I've, been having, I've been having allergy issues like no other. Yeah, no, I did that multiple times because I wanted to make sure. I don't mind giving people a second shot. If people say something out of anger and suddenly break up with you in anger and that looks like a trigger, I don't mind. I came back in with them again to make sure that that's accurate. Now, again, that like, that's what they really genuinely feel overall, especially when it comes out of nowhere. We'll cover this again if we so. decide to go over that document. But I wanted to show this real quick just because I, 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 I want you guys to know if you go looking around the Internet and you end up finding some nonsense on this. The reality is, is that like the people are just lying. Um, and this isn't like me doing the typical content creator cover bullshit. It is literally, I'm sorry. They're lying. I know what my relationship with No was like, and it had a lot of issues. It also had a lot of good parts up until that last month. And if you notice, I did want to fix things. I wanted to work, uh, work on things. I always felt like the few major issues we had were entirely too dangerous of topics to touch, despite them festering and just causing problems. There were many times we did get into a topic, and while it might have gotten messy, we came out fine, if not even better than before. I understand that I am I understand that and I am sorry that I fell into the same mistakes multiple times. I was trying to be my best for to either avoid them or work through them with you. Some things aren't easily fixed after just one conversation after all. Dealing with things in that way was and is still rather new to me. I'm sorry I kept hitting the same rakes. I really was working on it to be better about it. I did ruin Christmas. I accept that and it that is entirely on me. I wanted to try and fix things. I really did want that. Everything became very real and very difficult, though, for me. My mind felt entirely scrambled, and I had to work my way back through that. And then there's the stuff about, you know, lied about the sex stuff, and then, you know, you were initiating, and in my mind, I did still have feelings for you. I wanted to ha make you happy. I'm not blaming you for the record. I genuinely cared and wanted to make you feel amazing during that. So there's this ongoing thing where supposedly I coerced her, but this goes directly against it. This is directly from her Twitter, or her uh, Discord, excuse me. And this is... Dated 1227. 1227, 2023. This is literally four days after the day in question. So I just want you guys to know, like, before, you know, you dig through Twitter or any other place, please, please maintain critical thinking. If there are people who are just going to read these things and just leave because of them, please unsubscribe. Like, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just unsubscribe. Um, and there's a quick claim I really want to address. Because there's something that keeps getting pushed randomly that's kind of underground, but it's this weird accusation that Poppy and I 
have like requirements of other people that we don't have of ourselves. But here's the thing. It's okay not to have the same boundaries. Like it's okay if two people do not have the exact same set of boundaries or a relationship. And no, I always make sure to ask people, hey, is there anything you need to talk about after this? Like, you want to bring up is what are your needs? What are your wants in the relationship? Poppy does too. She also asks people these questions. And frankly, we're kind of learning that one of the major red flags that we actually have to watch out for is when people don't answer those questions. People that don't answer them tend to be a lot of the ones who are freaking out later, making up lies, not really understanding consent or anything else, and then spread bullshit about us to other people. Now, this is a common thing that keeps happening. It sucks, but like, the red flags we have to watch out for are like the really small ones nowadays. They're, they're the really tiny ones. So yeah, I just want you guys to know that like when you're, when you're, Engaging with this stuff, if possible, to recognize that there there are people who have incentives to talk about this. My only incentive is to tell the truth. And we'll be talking more about some of this stuff later, but again, I want I just kind of want to paint a picture because we're gonna go over this again. And I think it's really important to, you know, make it clear to you that, you know, there's a difference on the sides of this, right? And I hate to frame it as sides, but that's that's the issue. There are people who, you know, have a vested interest in, you know, wanting to essentially take away my income, right? Like, I want to be really clear. My action was to come out and accuse No of sexual assault. Her action, along with someone who coordinated it, was to send letters to my work and scare my boss into firing me. Now, granted, there's this idea online going on where, like, my boss fired me because I'm supposedly a sex pest. This is cope. The reality is, is that I was given an ultimatum. The ultimatum was, is either I see social media and the channel, or I will be let go. My answer was, this violates my civil liberties, as well as the handbook for my work, because I did not say the name of our practice, which is the violation in question, and I did not engage in harassment. I only asked people to block uh, the person who sexually assaulted me. Thank you, MC Fallen, for the $5. And so basically, long story short is, is that I want you to understand, we haven't painted any of our enemies as as uh pdfiles we haven't tried to paint them as these you know awful you know every bad thing under the sun all we have said is this is what this person did to me allegedly right like again the issue was is that these these people are willing to go as far as they want to do as much harm i'll give you an example don't spill flavor red bull i'm not going to say who this person is because uh we'll do that for another time but I do want you to understand something that is very wild. By the way, trigger warning for uh, childhood sexual abuse. So check this out. I just want you guys to see this. This is this is the crap that we have to deal with. And, and again, we can talk more about this. But this is this is this is just malicious, right? So this person decided to write Poppy Diabolique. That's me. Didn't you, your cousin, for like three to four years? Because I remember you bragging about your relationship with your minor cousin when you were fifteen or seventeen. You know, after you sent me. That thing, adding blackmail to the... So here's the thing. This never happened. I don't even know what this... I don't even know what this person is referencing. Like, to give you insight into this, like, understand, you're being lied to. Ideas of Gord? Yeah, no. Uh, I'm not going to cover that person because, again, we're not going to respond or interact. I will say that I don't take the opinions of transmed seriously, and I have a feeling that there's probably a a, a lot of leftover whatever from from you know, a video that we did about male socialization. Yeah, basically, yeah. So the, the, you can watch that. Again, I'm not playing in the politics. I'm not going to jump into this. We're not going to do a segment on 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 anything that person says because I I won't. I don't play in the mud with uh with uh children. So cool. Um, but I do want to point this out because this does this does bother me. So I'm going to be really really candid with you guys. Okay, based on my therapy, I know of at least two times where I was a victim of CSA. The first one was most likely due to my cousin Andy, who was in his 20s. I don't have any memory of that, but there's a lot of stuff around it that basically points at it, including us suddenly moving away to another city, me and my mom, and why a family member decided to set that house on fire with him inside it. When I talk about trauma, let me be really clear. I also know that one of my female cousins, Seven, did something to me at five because she was reenacting what was done to her by a family friend. Now, I've worked through most of this, at least the second one, the first one I'm still processing, but that's probably what this person who used to know me is referencing. Now, 
as to this reference about this particular type of prawn, because I don't mind taking hits, because your mom is very good at just kind of owning her shit, like I always have, did I send something like this to this person? Sure. It was a comic called Saturday Mornings by Black Kitten. It is a very well-written story that happens to have two siblings getting together. They are both 18, and it is a actually really sweet story. Yeah, no shame. Like, no harm. The person in question here, I have screenshots of, directly stating to me that they share this particular thing. Though they've tried to do a bunch of cope and pretend they, they didn't. Yeah, see? Someone knows frickin' Black Kitten. Based. Monday mornings through Saturday mornings is, is so good. Yeah, it's sweet. Foxy Degenerate, right? It's so good. It's so good. Right, right. Yeah, no, no. I, I've, I've read a decent amount of it over Poppy's shoulder during migraines. Yeah, you're allowed to explore whatever you want in fantasy. Like, again, like, I don't give a shit. We've said this before. Thought control is, is, is lame. This is, this is why we hate the shipper debate, because it's basically just nonsense. But I want you guys to understand this, because this is, a, this is like a quintessential set, like, version of what these people do, right? Yes, Shelter42, Luna. Yes, that, this is what this is. It is a comic about two, uh, two 18-year-old siblings who happen to form a relationship and double down on it and end up getting kicked out of their dad's house. And it's actually like a really difficult story. There's no coercion. There's no harm. It's just a story, and it's you can like it or not like it. You can be down for it or not. That's your call. But this is the stupidity we deal with. This person stated that they wanted to read this, which is why I gave it to them. They also said they shared that kink, which is why I gave it to them. But notice this. So we're going to make up something carte blanche out of a thing I told someone confidential about, you know, about uh, confidentiality, because this person in question is also uh, a survivor of CSA. So we were, you know, Dealing with that together, Pot, well, Poppy, have you considered the being guilty while, uh, of existing while kinky? True, true. I, I am guilty of that. But this is what these people do. They take a nugget of truth or two, and then they build this elaborate fan fiction around it. And this is the shit we've been dealing with. It's a form of gish gallop. Like, it's a gish gallop. And for those who don't know what that is, that is a type of uh, informal fallacy where you basically just throw out claim after claim after claim after claim after claim. And by the, person, by the time the person has debunked the first one, you're still like 10 or 10, 20 claims already in. So it just overwhelms them. A really good example of this is um, Rob Knorr. If you've ever watched a, a, a um, debate panel with Rob Knorr, I think his name is Rob Knorr, he is the king of Gish Gallup. I don't mean that as a compliment at all. <laughs> I want to be clear. Clear, it's, it's, it's a bitch tactic. Um, a proper argument should be you make a claim, the person refutes, you make, you know, they then make a claim, you refute. Like it should, there should be, there are, this, this is, there's this, a flow that goes. This is bowling, there are spot, rules. Right. <laughs> well, and then we also deal with a bunch of people who know the truth on a number of topics, but then still act like they don't or mm -hmm. made other decisions about what they think about the truth later based on their own feeling. Well, yeah, like for example, Hella Vitram used to be a friend of ours and a former partner. Hella decided to, you know, leave us, which is fine. She was allowed to do that. We were a little surprised because it came out of nowhere after two weeks of silence when I was in the hospital. And uh, this is when I had my vaginoplasty. Mm -hmm. And basically what ended up happening was, just for FYI, is that, is that, you know, despite the fact that Hella was around when all the stuff with Sage happened and she knows the truth, in fact, she was on the phone with us with Sage when Sage was in the hospital at our house. Like, Hella was here, and we were here, and we were all on the phone with Sage together. Yeah, yeah, and she was also in the meeting when we were starting to piece out what had happened. Ghost had come forward oh, with more information. And long story short is, what she ended up doing is she decided to go over to the other side because she started dating someone on it, and uh, I don't remember the order of operations there, but that was a thing. And what the frustrating part is, this to this day... She's sharing the hate on blogs? Tumblr the hate blogs, uh, uh, literally spreading misinformation about a situation she was there for. So, like, I want yeah. to understand that, like, yeah. here's what I think happened. And maybe we will turn this into a segment. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about how this stuff seems to come about. What I think happened is this. I think these people are a number of old friends and partners who had some kind of interpersonal conflict with me. I'm not going to lie. At all. I don't, my relationships don't usually end great. Borderline's a bitch, okay? But these are interpersonal conflicts. ZZ has seen every one of them. These are basically just interpersonal conflicts. They ended, they're whatever. But what these people do is they get together, 
They start sharing their stories and then they all convince one another that this is somehow harm. They escalate offense to harm and then call it abuse. And then they work as a coordinated effort to then start going after you. And the problem is once you start a few pebbles down the hill, you soon have a rock slide. Because the issue is, is that the pebble doesn't take responsibility for the rock slide. But that's what happens. Because as time goes on, their movement gains momentum. And where before the idea of going after my job was unthinkable, now that's just a walk in the park. Going after my home, like threatening my actual physical existence. They don't have a problem with this. Sharing nonsensical documents that are just cherry-picked Discord vent logs, we'll get to it. These people will just do. Like, they'll just do it. And so the thing is, is that what I want you guys to understand is, is that right now is a really rough time because I'm still looking for work and I am, you know, having to speak to numbers of people. For example, I'm not going to say where, but I know for a fact that our home has been doxxed. And, and I don't mean like attempted dox like it was with Rudy. Fun doesn't like Rudy either. I agree. Um, but unlike Rudy, who couldn't actually find us, uh, instead just spent like four hours on a stream talking shit and going over Google Maps and, and roughly trying to locate us. Motherfucker wasn't even close. But the joke was, is that we've actually been potentially doxxed. And here's the thing I want you to realize is that what goes into that? For example, you know, and I do, we do mean the full definition of docs. Like okay? your address and real name. Yeah, yeah. And not like the, oh, just, just this tiny part of my identity got, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Your first name does not count as doxing. No, legally or otherwise. Just saying. But, but this is what I need you guys to understand is that, so this happened, right? This is the thing. And what I think is really important is that you understand like what goes into that. So when you have a, a group of people actually dox you, the thing you have to do is contact your credit bureaus and freeze your account so no one can actually steal your identity. Because it's incredibly, incredibly easy to do right then. So they can't take out loans or anything. Um, and then you have to then contact your local police and have an alert put on your account so they A, don't swat you, and B, know that something's going on so they can come to your house if there's a problem. We also had to do that with the Michigan FBI. Understand that like this is stuff that like we had to kind of call on and deal with in the middle of our lives and all this. This is the stuff that we were talking about. This is why I wanted to talk specifically just about no last stream because that in and of itself is just one microcosm of a larger issue and no joined these people. Please remember that this person was my girlfriend. We were in a relationship. I was one of the two people she was considering living with. She can lie about that now, but I've got the screenshots. She probably won't release them. I'll have to. But the reality is, is that she basically claimed that like, I'm a stalker when in reality it was, we were in a relationship and then she just ended things suddenly and then decided to lie and decided to violate consent. The issue is, is that because our relationship was happening during some of these, these harassment campaigns, we had conversations about this. She knows about them or knew about them. And what I said to her was, even if we ever break up, please just don't join these people. Just once, please don't join these people. What did she do? Join these fucking people. And I want to be clear too. One of the common tactics is that these people will, the harassment campaign people will use is that they will start contacting people around you and then going, hey, you should know this thing about this person. And then they will reach out and they will also try to start claiming that they're trying to help, they're safe, they're X, Y, and Z, they, they know what you're going through, and they'll be there for you, and it's happened a number of times by a variety of people so far. Xena, that's just crazy because that's the tactic cults use, yeah. And yet we get called the cult. And I have screenshots of people going around doing this shit. Like, I have them. We have the evidence. We sit on so much fucking evidence. And like, the thing is, is, Having once already been the victim of somebody posting like shit tons of screenshots of your DMs, it sucks. Like it's a massive invasion of privacy that really, really fucks with you. And I hesitate to do that to anyone else, but I'm sitting here and we're getting more and more abuse and more and more like criticism, you know, and then more and more shit. We have to defend ourselves to more and more stuff. More and more people drop off because they suddenly believe these docs without ever having talked to us, even though that they could. Even people close to us who know us really, really well won't hear our side, don't want to hear it, and just dip. And then we're like, oh, we didn't even know that you had an issue or you knew anything. 
or that like you were holding on to information that like you should have brought to us well and one of the things that's been really sucky about this situation has been is that a lot of people we trusted and thought were way better at this have all folded like i'm not going to go into names but there are former friends of the channel who like had emotes in our website and on our chat or in our our discord or people who are regular guests who at this point i i don't know if they just took their stupid pills or what but the the fact that they believe these things like don't be wrong i've looked at these documents they're shittily put together out of order and there are a lot of whining often with a lot of stuff that is just out of context or resolutions aren't really posted or as a person venting in a discord vent channel and that's being taken as gospel or they're just regular conflicts that happen and the issue is is that these people do this and Again, the only thing I can say is that it's active maliciousness. I don't think it's them being stupid. I don't think it's them being dishonest. I Well, I do think it's them being dishonest. I don't think they're being dishonest to themselves. I think what it is is they don't like us or didn't like the way I handled coming out about my assault, and this is what they do. So this is the thing I want. I'm just asking you guys. I'm not saying you guys have to stay. I'm not saying you have to keep being members of the community. I'm not saying you have to, you know, stay subbed. If you never want to look at us again, that's okay. I'm not going to hold anybody here. What I will say is this, though. Before you choose to do anything, my only request is, is that you try to understand both sides of any given conflict. We've talked about this in the past. Even in situations that were clearly one-sided, we still try to make sure we understand both sides of the situation. Even when allegations have come out against other much larger content creators, we still try to understand them. And the reason for that is, is that it's a big deal to try to understand how these situations come about. I believe, truthfully, my behavior online, not even speaking for ZZ, just me, my behavior online is sometimes spicy. A lot of my accounts are not safe for work because I'm a degenerate furry. But I don't think I've ever done anything to warrant this pushback. I don't think I've warranted anything that required people to find my real life job and lose it. I want to be clear, too, like, if there is something we need to own, the best we can to own it. Odds know this. There are times where we don't always make things public because if something's, you know, in DMs between, well, we would rather keep it there. But we do try to be upfront for the ones that mess up. And you know what? Like, we do have logs of stuff that we've dealt with. We do have public statements that we've put out. There's stuff in the announcements channel on the Discord. If you really need to go find something, there are plenty of videos detailing trauma that poppy and i have both gone through on this channel not to mention like it's very easy to figure out what we've where we've been i'm not gonna name anyone but i will say this there have been a number of people who are close friends of me who did the right thing and that is they are friends or, or acquaintances that came to me and asked about these things one of them today was a really close friend of mine who had seen this stuff thank god that this person heard me out and listened why are you two so evil and abusive you know that's a wonderful question goodbye and like, seriously, if you really think that like comments like that are going to work, like, what does that help anyone? Yeah, what are you, what are you doing? Like, do you think that like, do you think that helps? No. Do you think that helps like, on? Do you think that, like, do you think this actually like is justice? Yeah. I mean, what that person just posted in here is just abusive. They're not trying to help. They're not trying to make anything in here. I'm actually going to make them uh, Mike N. You are just a person who gets off on doing harm. You could have come in and asked questions. You could have done any number of things to try to enlighten yourself and actually try to hear both sides of a perspective. And instead, you just came in and acted like an idiot. And now you're hidden from the channel forever. That doesn't, I don't lose anything from that. I don't lose any sleep over hiding you from the channel and never hearing you, hearing from you again. But you did nothing. Like you were up there with those like Kiwi farmers and 4chaners that like post like, oh, you'll never be a woman. You'll never have over it. Like literally the same copy pasta every time. If you want to know what the fuck, these situations are i have no problem giving you the information like i did the people who were in my dms and you make an educated decision but well, we're not going over receipts tonight we're just yeah. we're just talking <sighs> we'll be doing receipts another time because that shit takes time to get together i do want to be clear like the people coming after us know that we've talked like i do need to make that utterly these people already know that the harm is happening they already know that we are a target and they're they still going at it arms and they're still going at it and this is so fucking common on the left. Anyone who's been around the YouTube sphere for a while knows anytime Kiwi farmers find blood in the water, they will just come. They do every single fucking time. And they escalate everything and make it all worse. And then we wonder, oh, 
wait, why, you know, why the fuck does everyone on, like, the YouTube sphere fucking trauma? Guess what? This cycle just keeps on fucking going. There is no limits and no lines and gives a shit because, oh, they personally aren't, you know, responsible for the consequences because other people did that or other people escalated. But no, if you're the one adding to it, no, you've got some culpability in there. Honestly, Simon, uh, you said Pyrocynical is a furry degenerate and people like him still. So what's the big deal? I'll be honest. I think it's a combination of the blood and the water idea. That is, you know, one person strikes a hit and then everyone shows up. But I also think it is a combination of that along with another factor. 90% of these claims are always about me. And so here's the thing that's wild. Is that I genuinely think a lot of this just comes from just transphobia. Well, Specifically, in my case, transmisogyny. Absolutely. Because what I've noticed is the people who come at us, there is a subtle way in which, or not so subtle way, that they just come out at they just come out after us and they come out after me and again it's any action i take is somehow bad so if i act spicy i'm not acting like a therapist i'm bad if i post something that's not safe for work i'm being bad if i make an argument about you know hey it'd be cool if i wasn't assaulted that's bad irritable sometimes that's horrendous and bad like I'm not saying I'm an easy person to get along with. I'm not. Like, I don't think I am. But the idea that I'm somehow abusive or terrible, or I just, I don't accept that. I don't. And the reality is, is that these people are never going to convince me of such. One of the reasons I'm still around and haven't, like, you know, uh, unalived is that, honestly, when I come out of my own, like, self-hating fugue, I do realize that, like, this stuff just isn't true. These people are accusing me of things that like are so are so exorbitant and like I guess extreme that like there's no way my brain can grab onto them and ever like gaslight myself into thinking I've done them. Like for example, with my 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 trauma as a child, did I reenact that? Sure. With a girl that was my own age. I've since spoken to her twin sister and we've buried the hatchet through that 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 intermediary. But the reality is is that like when that happened, that got out of school. I ended up being a pariah for several years, barely had any friends. And from there, I got real good about consent because why? I never wanted to be treated like that again. I'm not saying I haven't fucked up. And I gotta be honest, this was a, like... It was a kid doing, a, doing like, things like that. These were children where adults utterly failed them to actually take any of the proper steps that should have happened. So yeah, no, Poppy kind of had to educate herself on shit. Figure things out. Yeah. Like, I grew up in the 90s. <laughs> Not a great time to learn consent. That's something yeah. I had to figure out on my own and how to be careful. Like, I grew up poor. So one of the reasons I was so big on condom usage with my partners, because I didn't want to be a parent. And then I found a lady who groomed me and then I became a parent. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I'm just going to be really clear that, like, if people want to fold off or unsub, be my guest. It was nice having you. The comments and the, the trans, you know, the transphobic slurs and all the other bullshit that people have been leaving, you're just going to get hidden from the channel. We've had so many, like, fucking KF le level, like, stuff. I literally deleted, like, eight comments an hour ago that were basically things saying that, uh, I, fuck, they were saying things, you know, just using the, you know, the other T slur. Um, you know, it's like, okay, that's fine. You, you guys can fuck off. Honestly, petty all assaults are just that. False allegations, all boxing is another. Well, that's my thing is like, I don't mind making fun of these people, but I'm not going to go after their lives as much as I dislike some of them, as much as I, I loathe some of these people. And I'm going to be really clear. Some of them I fucking loathe. I'm not going to go after their life. I'm not going to fuck with their job because I have principles. Away. This world is hard enough to be in without people screwing each other over out of being able to eat. I want We've you to always had that principle too. Like, there's literally a line in our server on the rules that say, "Don't go after fucking people's per don't go after people's personal lives." I don't care how much you hate them, what you think about them. Like, it is way too easy to have parasocial assholes, um, you know, going after people or trying to make judgments about IRL situations that they're not part of, not around for. I have no idea what the actual nuance there is. 
you know, to go after people. And people on the left have tried this in the past. That rule on the server is there because somebody made us put it there. Somebody's actions were really fucked up. And we were like, you know what? This is not how we want our community to be. And we have held that position for years. But suddenly it's us and people hate us. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's go do it to Xena and Poppy now. And again, here's the thing. This is, this is why I know I'm in the right. Because I've had people come to me in private and tell me that our community has been the safest place they've found on the online level. They've left, they jumped from Vosh's server to every other person under the sun. And the one place they found a home where people listen to them and actually want to talk and engage and care is our, 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 our server. One of our own mods split it off because they apparently um, didn't like my pushback against my boss. They thought my boss was in the right. And now has directly told me, I'm very clearly clear, our ex-mod Kira just literally just spit out, oh, I don't believe that you were sexually assaulted. Because I read some DMs from before the trip that convinced me that what happened during the trip wasn't real. I want you to think about that for a minute. Those two things don't work together. Anything that happened beforehand doesn't actually counter the claim. And this is a person I've had go through like studies and documents. This person's very intelligent. Oh, she's known for like, just Thoroughness. outright reading like 50 page documents just in their full coming to conclusions like she's known for doing that and doing but, extensive research but then this happens and then she says oh i'm probably going to get demodded for this and then she hits herself in the face with a stupid bat and leaves the server on her own despite me defending her numerous times and then like, goes behind people's backs and starts dming some of the more vulnerable people in our community love that for you it's been the safest community i've been in in a while myself yeah no nightwild you're you're wonderful and again I want to give I want to give like a thing real quick. I want to point out Nightwall for a second because Nightwall is are you able to say on stream? Nightwall, can I can I mention what happened previously if I'm vague? I'm not trying to shame you or anything. I just I, I want to bring it up because I think it's a really it's a really good show of your character as a human being. Nightwall is a plural system and a survivor of a lot of shit. I'm not gonna go into it, but I'm gonna say human trafficking is involved. Nightwall is a fucking trooper. And like queer mm -hmm. as shit and literally gender personified. I love Nightwile. There was a point where Nightwile had a alter who ended up going to another person's server who doesn't like us, then came back and admitted what they did. And was I upset? Yeah. Was I angry? Yeah. Did we talk about it? Yeah. And you know what Nightwile did? Worked and regained my trust to the point now where I've actually suggested that I think Nightwile should be a mod for our server. Because the reality of the situation is, is that... When we have conflict in our server, we try to work through it. Ask Ghost, ask Christy, ask anyone. If I Alchemist step up, streamers, Alchemist streamers, yeah. yeah, Alchemist streamers, same thing. Got preyed on by somebody, pulled over because these are young baboo systems. And what ended up happening? Welcome to back with open arms. Did I express my anger? Yes. Did I tear them down? No. Nightwell, did I ever tear you down? Did I ever attack you as a person? Or did I just express that I was hurt? Be honest, please. I, I genuinely want to know. This is the issue that I have, is that the way these people characterize me does not meet the reality of my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I just expressed I was hurt. Like, again, like, this is, like, literally what you said. Thank you. Like, there's a reason why every night I hang out in VC, Nightwile is there and is just a delight. Yeah, systems gotta stick together. True. So, that was cringe as fuck. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. I, don't know that, I don't know what that fist was. I'm white as hell. Um, but, I just want you guys to understand this. So before we get into segments, just, just please understand that like, this is the, the shit that we're dealing with is so multifaceted. Like I've literally heard that like, anywhere I go to work, I'm gonna get review bombed all to hell. Yeah. By chat GPT. Because- Generated emails. Because they can't be bothered to write them themselves. Because one of Lily's enemies, Brittany, has decided that I am the devil and has decided to treat me as a Lily level threat and I'm going to be honest, I have my issues with Lily. I have a lot of issues with Lily. But you know what? I haven't talked shit about her in a while. And you know why? Because their behavior makes her look downright rational. Like, someone gave me shit online because they were like, I made, a, I made a, a, a joke about, like, that moment when the same people that harass you are the people that harass Lily. And then it was that picture of, like, Grizzly Adams, and it's, like, the pan in, and he's, like, like the nod. That's the shit that the, the like... It was just that. And I joked about it being a truce. And what ended up happening was is they got butt hurt as fuck. And we're like, you're justifying all these. No, it's a joke. You fucking idiots. 
It's the fact that, like, from a certain perspective, I can understand why she lashes out and rages because you guys have no lines. It's also why stopped working with you. Yes, Zeno, people more unhinged than Lily. Oh, yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. because Lily's never threatened to come to my house. Let's put it that, let them put it that way. Can I say Riz just once? Riz. I can ask Riz. Um, sorry. Flashback to, like, the internet 15 years ago. Anyway, we should get to segments. I do want to note something. Go. All right, guys. We do see all of the issues with Euclid and Euclid applications. We haven't really been able to deal with them in a long time. Why this entire harassment campaign? Has it been that long? Yes, it started during the summer. This isn't new. It got, the ball got rolling as of December, you know, end of December kind of thing, but like, or the ball got rolling bigger, frankly. But this stuff was going on really long before then, and really, really hard to be around day to day and available. They're having to deal with so much bullshit constantly. And at least the last few months, I don't know, like I, it's really about every other night we're like, oh God, we're dealing with another thing coming up, another person, something else happening, someone else taking issue, someone else having questions about something like, and we're trying to get to everyone, but it's hard. Yeah. And the, we're trying to figure out how to do this. We've had a lot of mods fall off. A lot of our mods are also just as tired as we are. Like when people decide to go betray us, they usually also just turn to Thank you, Gentle general. Wonders. And like over all the mods too. Like if you just bounce, like no, our mod team is also close to people and also knows that like what's going on and they're taking just as much psychic damage as we are and it makes it really hard for us to be as available to our community as we would like to be. We would much, like I really- I created a Discord account <laughs> to join your server. Fuck yeah. Are you in there right now? Because if you're not, let me know. Well, we'll see who we can let in at this point. No, no, um, no. Radis Radis has been in our, our our chats for a long time. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. We've had so many issues in the past with some of the previous mods that we've had to take off mod, uh, you know, overreacting, not really like good skills to de-escalate conflict, being really shitty to earn tickets. And we can't have that. We, If we're going to have a functioning server and more stuff with Euclid and have more spots in our server opened up to larger discussions, potential conflict, we need more people who are really able to handle you know some of the situations that can come up with members so we're figuring out what we can do as far as mods it's gonna take some time they're tired too try and hold on with those guys i know it's Love not you. fun but also most and of the server is safe i i do got to be clear most of it is safe okay sorry this has been on my mind for a while i keep having to see like the mod like to talk to the mods constantly i do see you guys a lot i'm gonna make a statement at the end of this to the people who are members of this this group that are constantly being after me right so Brittany, courtney anybody who is part of the, this 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 hate mob if you want to reach out find a way to let me know so we have a channel email and what i'm going to say is this if you want to reach out and have an honest one-on-one -on -one conversation with me about the things that you're concerned about I am willing to do that. And if there is genuine, if there's a genuine way in which I've hurt you or upset you or bothered you, I am willing to apologize on that stuff. If you don't believe me, ask the people that I've already talked to. I don't want to continue this. At some point, I'd like to get back to my life. You want to get back to your life. Scratching at this itch is not helping you. It's just leaving you bleeding and it's not making you any healthier. It's not leaving me any healthier. It's just doing harm. If you want to talk and just leave this shit behind, we never have to look at each other again but you want an apology for the wrongdoing that I supposedly did, or at least to hear you out and us come to some kind of compromise, I'm willing to do that. Goes for me if I'm involved. So that is my offer. There are two people that that's not extended to. One of them we talked about last time. The other one we'll be talking about to this, this time. That one has a special offer. We'll get to that in a little bit.